G'day and welcome back for more Space Engineers Survival. I've got something I want to show you guys before we head back over to the silo and get it constructed. And that is... A brand new map. What I've done is actually load up images instead of using WIP's image to LCD converter or any of the other ones available. These are an actual modded file so that we've got the full 512 by 512 resolution. I decided to do this for a couple of reasons. The main one is actually not related to this map, I just used, as a, used it as an excuse to be able to update this map. The main reason I did this is because I want to put some other maps around the hangar and the base that need to have a bit of text on them. And if we're going to have text on them, I need that extra resolution so that the text is still legible. And at the other end of this elevator, we're going to see the first of those. Ta-da! We have a map of the hangar. It's a bit of a work in progress and I will tweak and update it as we go along. But I'm reasonably happy with this. And it was because of a suggestion someone gave me that I made this. The suggestion was that I put maps like you have in a shopping centre and with a little marker saying you are here on each of them and put them at all of the stair exits. Oh, I've gone one too far. Dang it. And I have done that on this one here. I haven't updated it with the you are here marker yet, but I will make a different version of the map for each location once I've decided exactly where they're going to be so that I can put the markers in. Unfortunately, it will mean an extra image every single time, but that's the price you pay. And you can see why I needed the resolution, because for this text on here to be legible, I did need it to be that high, rather than just the 178 by 178. You may also notice that this is on a widescreen LCD. I have deliberately set up the image so that it works on this. If I place this on a full block one, it would end up stretched. But on this one it works perfectly and I preferred the idea of using a widescreen one since it's kind of nice and not taking up the whole block volume with it. Lastly, the piece de resistance. We have, and this was suggested so long ago but it was too funny for me to not do it, we have these. This is a bit of a take on a sign that was at least once posted on a London Underground station. But it was suggested when I first built the Goose's hangar area and so I have done it. While doing these I also upgraded a little bit of the hangar area for the Goose. I think it'll look nicer having these extra blocks in the entranceway and for these diagonal ones I've tried this as the look. I'm still not completely happy with what I can do across the top here but it's a start. I may end up just leaving these diagonal ones blank. Or, oh, or I could, once we take that out, I could do this and just put yellows of this size in there. That, that might work okay. Hmm. Then I could put, instead of having full cubes here, I could go with these. Does that work? From this angle it looks okay. From this angle it kind of looks funny, but whether it looks funny at the top or not I'm not sure. Anyway, I'll keep thinking about this one. I haven't decided exactly how to do it. But I I wanted to keep trying a few different things for the diagonal ones because it really does look better on these square ones if I've got this extra row that matches the rest of the hangar. And now off to the silo. Ooh, I am heavily loaded. This is going to be delicate. Though, fortunately, I do not have to go very far. I'm willing to take this risk so that I don't have to travel back and forth a few times. Although I probably still will. Ooh, it's daylight outside. Excellent. Just what I needed. 
make life a little bit easier. There's another reason why I wanted to upgrade the images on the LCDs from the text-based monospace images to actual textures. And that's for the lava pit on top. If I want to make it animated, I can load up multiple images into the LCD as the mod and then use those images on a sequence and hopefully get something that looks like slightly animated lava, which should look pretty cool if I can get it looking half decent. I've welded up most of this place and we just need to get a battery in here so that we can actually power things up and then I can move that connector temporarily as I do have a better design of that place anyway, but once I've got some power on here, I can move it so that the nugget can connect and I can offload everything that it's carrying since it's got a pretty decent cargo capacity and I really don't want to do that by hand. My first load I did do by hand and it was tedious enough that I don't want to do it again. Okay. Powered up. Ooh, how does this look with the lights? Hmm. Maybe we could... Can I get access to it? No, not easily. Maybe we could, with those lights, just increase their radius to, say, 5 meters. And intensity, take it down to 2.5. How does that look? Too bright. Yeah, maybe we'll go 4. Yeah, that's reasonable. Now, this is going to be delicate work. I need to get you locked onto something else. Uh, maybe I'll just make a temporary lock platform for you. Now, for the redesign here. I want to get rid of that. Use the nugget to drop all these parts off. Oops. Oh dear, no! Oh, it was only a single girder. Did not need to get so excited about that. Okay, so what we're going to do is put one of these here. Put one of... Do I want it that close? No, I probably don't want it that close. Or do I? I was just thinking it might make it just that extra bit of difficulty for the drone. So I'll put that in there. Put that there. Put a connector on top. And then we just got to pipe these two bits together. And that should be relatively easy if we go for one of these. Then a curve there and then straight. Nice and simple. Looks a lot simpler, a lot neater than what we had before. And I think it's a lot better in every way. The last thing I want to do though is put... Do I want a catwalk? Yeah, I'll go with a catwalk end. Then I want the straight. There it is. And that's it. Weld that up exactly as it was before. And we will have a connector ready for our new drone whenever I get around to making it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. I'm glad I redesigned it because it is much better than what it was before. There is one last little touch though, and I don't know if I've got the components to do it. This is another suggestion that was given to me that I really liked. Oh, I think I do have the parts for it. And I want to place a corner LCD flat bottom. There. There we go. Not suspicious at all. Facility welded up. Entry fixed up, and now we can go park this, and I should have pretty much all of the components I need in order to build the rest of the facility now. I really want to go and make a missile right now, and finish the missile printing mechanism. Oh. But I am out of magnesium, so I cannot do that. And why... Uh-oh. I see smoke. Smoke is not good. What is going on? <gasps> you should have recharged. Why didn't you recharge? No. I am going to do... <laughs> Alright. 
You have lots of battery power. So you are going to be my solution to this problem. What I am going to do is I'm going to do my little rotor attachment trick to transfer some power. And hopefully not blow... Oh no, wait. If I'm going to use this, I need to make sure those thrusters aren't lining up over the top of the butterball. So let's... Oh, that's going to be really tight. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. I'm going to waste some batteries. Doing it any other way seems very silly. Trying to get in here, I mean I know I can move the goose out of the way, but trying to get in here and lift this up is just going to be rife with problems. So, I am going to just build an extra battery onto the butterball and transfer all of its power out into the rest of the ship. It's a bit wasteful since I will be destroying those power cells and I could just grind down one of the batteries on board and then replace the few power cells that I grind in that process. But given that I'm playing with tight restrictions on power, that just feels a little bit like cheating to me. It's taking away one of the challenges that I've actually got and I didn't really want to do that. Oh, it's... Dang it, is it doing that thing where I repair stuff and then I have to repair it again? Oh no, it's that motor that's smoking. Okay. Let's get you back on the dock. Okay. Butterball is reconnected. I've wasted a bunch of power cells. But the butterball is reconnected. That is the important part. Nothing else really matters. So as the butterball is okay. And it better stay that way, because it's really annoying when the damage keeps coming back when I've fixed it. Now, is it charging? Recharging, 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 recharging. Okay. Ugh. Well, since I really want to get some magnesium and I can't use the butterball right now, I'm going to go back and do this full-on old school. You keep coming out of, out of mothballs, ugly duckling, and you're doing it again. I am taking you on a mining trip. Let's do it. I feel like I need some sort of mining tune or on the road again. That sort of song going on right now. Because this little baby, you just keep being useful. And this... <laughs> I'd, I'd love to say I expected this sort of problem, and I mean I probably should have expected this sort of problem, but this is not why I left the drill on the Ugly Duckling. I left the drill on the Ugly Duckling just because it wouldn't be the Ugly Duckling without the drill. Got all this cool, all these cool builds in the base, and here I am, drilling magnesium with the first ship I built in this series. It's just crazy. How did it come to this? I do like the little puffs that come out the back as the rock get it gets ejected. It's kind of cool. Uh, I can't remember how much mass this thing can take. I think it's more than it used to because I've added a couple of extra thrusters since then. Hmm. Maybe it's 30,000? That seems like a number that's familiar. So for those of you wondering why I also haven't yet made the display cabinet for the Ugly Duckling, this is another reason why. It's because I keep needing it. And if I put it away behind a glass wall, I'm not going to be able to use it easily when I need it. I'm going to stop at 26 because I was starting to feel that the uh, thrusters were struggling. Maybe I could do two loads. Just two quick trips. And then... Yeah. We'll do we'll do quick I seem to recall myself saying something along the lines of When I get this load of magnesium with the butterball, I'm not going to need to get any more for a while. Cause the last load lasted me so long. How wrong I was. How very, very wrong. Okay, we've got some explosives started. They're going to take a little while to produce. So while I'm getting them ready to take over to the silo, let's go and grab another load.
That is fun. And then flare up to break. Try not to lose altitude as I do that. It'll be a sad moment when I eventually leave this valley. It's been home for so long now. I don't think it's happening anytime soon, mind you. But I just started thinking about that because I realised how little I need GPS markers in this region now. I just know where stuff is. And for someone like me with my terrible sense of direction to get to that point, that that's a lot of time spent in one place. Something I've been debating with myself recently, and mining always starts getting me thinking about plans for the future, is once I have an effective mechanism for fighting off the enemy bases, i.e. destroying them, I think I might get another mod in this session, and that will be the Planetary Installations mod. Rather than placing the bases myself, I think it could be nice to use Meridius 9's mod so that I get a bit of randomness in what turns up. It'll also be an extra inspiration for me to finish off my first design for a base for that mod and then maybe and then definitely add some more mods. Uh oh, did I just destroy something? I feel like I hear sparks. I think I just damaged the connector. Definitely hear sparks. Oh no, it's just the it's just the spotlight. It's all good. Don't need to worry about that. I can fix that when I get home. Phew. Oh no, I knocked, no, I knocked out the thruster. Dang. That is less than ideal. But yeah, I was thinking adding that mod in so that I've got some extra bases turning up. That way I'll have replenishing targets for the missiles. I don't think those bases will stop me in my progress toward attacking the enemy headquarters. I think it'll just be a nice thing to add a bit of extra variety to what's going on. Plus, if I do get some of the bases in that have the script that allows for gradually increasing antenna range, we should get some attacks from directions I haven't predicted. Oh, no, 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 no. Why you do that to me? Come on. I think I might just stop on the first connector to make my life easier. Oh, it doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, it takes me back having to land like that. Alright, how is our production of explosives going? Didn't need to go all around here to do it. Five. Wonderful. Just wonderful. That is taking forever. Since small grid warheads only need two of the explosives to function, I think we can start building our first missile design over here. So the idea will be that when the lower piston is at its full extension, the missile will line up perfectly with our launch tube. So let's just keep it really simple to start off with. Let's just build a row of armor blocks out to the middle of this block. So it'll be that one there. That's where I want to center the rocket. And let's just check to see if this welder also lines up there because I may have lined these up wrong. I needed to do this pretty... I need the welder to be pretty much in the exact position for this to work. Oh, I could probably just do this as well. Control panel? On. Get it to weld it up for me. Oh yes, I did line it up right. Sweet. So if that's the block I need to line it up to, I am going to come up. One, two, three, four, four. Five. Then I'm going to add a merge block. And I think I'll do the merge block on the side. 
I was trying to work out a way to have the merge block attach on the bottom and it just seemed silly. Let's start with remote control bo block at the rear. Then go with a thruster in the middle. Then a gyro. We'll need a battery, which I can think might work if we pop the battery there. We'll stick with a battery on the first design, but later on what I want to do is actually have a design that is using the little bit of uranium that I've accumulated from the drones and do this with reactors. So then we'll have five thrusters, which will be enough, I think. So on my previous designs, I'd gone with a single thruster, just forwards and hoped that I could get accurate enough. And I got reasonably close. It wasn't great, but it wasn't horrible. This time though, I think it makes a lot more sense to try and get at least a couple of extra directions of control out of it. And hopefully that'll mean I can hit the target. And even if my warhead doesn't go off, the idea of what I'm targeting is the antenna that's spawning the drones. So if I can hit that with just the kinetic force of what I've got here, it should be enough to damage it to the point where it won't be functional anymore anyway, which is kind of perfect. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Let's grind that off so that I can use it as a mounting point. If I move it down to there, we'll pop that there. We'll grab two more thrusters. Oh, we should uh, move the gyro as well. So I'll put the gyro there. Again, use armor as the mounting point. Then go with that, like so. Then, what I think I'll do is I'm going to make a launchable decoy from this thing. Unfortunately, I can't use anything like... Uh, what am I thinking? I can't use anything like rotors to launch decoys from, so I'll have to use these giant merge blocks. But if I place the merge blocks... Oh, is that going to be too close to the wall? I think it might. Oh no, this should work. So if I use the giant merge blocks like this, and I can get three of them around each side, I can then put a decoy on the back of it. Where's my decoy? That's not how you spell decoy. I can then put a decoy on the back of these, and as I approach the enemy base, I can just fling these off just when I'm outside of turret range. So hopefully they go into turret range first and just provide that teensy bit of distraction. It's gonna make this much more expensive to build, but I'll be interested to see whether this even remotely helps. It's like that. And if I'm spinning, hopefully I'll be able to fling these out a bit to the side so that their angles are a bit weird compared to my own. Fingers crossed. Then it is warhead, warhead warhead. Once I've welded all these blocks up, I'll uh, have another look at designing since I've had to leave a lot of gaps so that I can actually reach all the different blocks. I don't think the welder is going to be able to build this thing, but we can try. What I might do is if we go into the control panel and we grab our piston launcher, Set our maximum distance to two meters. Then move that out to there. If I then bring the welder down, it should maybe just pass by and maybe it'll be within the welding area. I think this is going to need to move more slow. Oh, eek. That is not a good place for that to be. That was very bad. It's just asking for clang. I don't think it's going to reach the ones on this side though. This will work once it's a projection because the welder will be able to go straight down through the middle of it. So if these decoys manage to actually survive all the way to the ground, I am totally going to add warheads to those so they're an extra little uh, cluster bomb sort of munition. That'd be fantastic. 
yeah definitely gonna need some uh, slight redesigns around here now that I see what it actually looks like gotta have some style on this thing so let's make it a, look a bit better oh man look what I did I messed up the placement <laughs> <laughs> the merch box. Ah. I think at some point I should set up an oxygen and hydrogen generator here. Since there's a very real chance that I'm going to be flying around when I'm here. And it would be nice to have the ability to refill my bottles here. I don't think there's much point putting anything more than just the decoy and the merge block on those three deployable decoys. So I think I'll just leave them as is. And we'll go with some slopes around there. What are we going to do with the back end? We need a camera in a couple of spots on here. So, camera. One on the nose. Alright, so one camera there. And let's put some backup cameras around. Since it's very likely to get shot early on. And if we've got alternatives, we might be able to see what we're doing the whole way. I've also been told how to fix the problem with Reggie not being able to see what's going on. So hopefully this time I'll be able to get Reggie in and get him to video the whole event. And before I run out of hydrogen, I'm going to fly back to base and grab some more. We have 39, 35, 31, plenty of time, 27, 23, there we go, 19. Made it back with comfort. Who says I need a new HUD? <laughs> uh, probably. I was just thinking, if I'm going to make Reggie watch this, I'm going to need to make it easier to spot for us. It doesn't really matter for that AI wh what colour we make it, but for us it'll definitely be easier if it's red. There we go. A little black and red rocket. Okay, so what I have done is I have named the warheads and put them in a group. I've named the thrusters, put them in a group. I've named the decoys and put them in a group. So they're the merge blocks that will actually allow for launch of the decoys. I've named everything. This is very unusual for me, but it is almost certainly going to be necessary to prevent me doing something stupid with this and blowing up everything inside the silo. So we've got all of those ready to go. Now what I need to do is grab the remote control and put it all on the hotbar in a sensible fashion. Now what I need to do is actually disconnect Rudolph, make a blueprint, and then reconnect it. So turn my thrusters on. Disconnect. Lose control. Uh, let's just make sure it is... Uh, terminal. Info. Rudolph Mark uh, 3 2 Mark something Mark 3 We'll call it Mark 3 Now let's take A blueprint of it We have a blueprint of the Mark 3 Grab control again Turn the merge block back on Excellent Merge down Cool Now I can set up this for Future printing I can get a projector and project this thing. So now we should be able to reprint one of these as soon as we launch it, which will be awesome. And on that note, I need to go and get Reggie because Reggie needs to see what's going on and I need to modify this save file so that Reggie can see from far enough away. The trouble I was having with Reggie not being able to see in the past was apparently related to the sync distance that exists so normally the sync distance is set to a maximum of three kilometers so reggie wasn't going to see anything outside that range but i need to change that so that he can which could be interesting performance wise but we'll see all right reggie is in and he can see the enemy base and it looks like that fleeting rival is actually going to make it here hmm I think since it's night time, it's probably not the best time for me to go attacking and trying to actually witness the damage from this new Rudolph. 
I think instead we're probably better off waiting until dawn. Which means waiting another hour or so. I have noticed something though while setting up Reggie's point of view, which is that the original Rudolph's nose cone is still intact and he's sitting there next to the enemy base, which is kind of cool. I think if it's still there when we finally take over that base, we're going to need to bring that back and put it in a display cabinet somewhere as the original Rudolph, just for the fun of it. Is that going to get here, that fleeting rival? Let's not wait for it to get here. Let's see if we can take advantage, and I probably should have just flown in the front door. If we can take advantage of this time and get the chicken hawk up and running again. Let's just add another battery. I'll actually leave this battery on it. Because if we've got that, then we could actually use Izzy's script to make sure that it stays recharged. Then we need... we can whack another one on. This is just a very <laughs> ugly uh, temporary addition. But I'm going to go out and I'm going to shoot a few things down. I need something to do during the night. I think I got rid of my programmable blocks off my hotbar. Oh well. Programmable. So if this bigger version of the Rudolph works, I think it will be... T oh, it's doing it again. I'm going to have to grind these blocks off. There's this little bug where damage that happens to something persists for some unknown reason. And it just keeps coming back unless you grind down the block and replace it entirely, which is annoying. Don't really need that downward spotlight anymore on this, since I won't be using it to fly around the sandbags. Let's grab... Uh, I'll sort out the thrusters later. They're all on at the moment anyway. Battery's full in 25 minutes. That's annoying. That's going to take a while. Okay, so much for using the chicken hawk tonight. How's the butterball going? Is it charged up now? It should be. Everything's running out of that charge. Everything's crashing. Yay, it's fully charged. Alright, so... Let's actually hop you off there. And let's park you on the goose. Ready to go. I could go do another night mining trip. Ooh! I've got a better idea than all these aggressive things. And that spiteful aggressor is relatively close. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That, w that was some clanging. Note. Do not connect the butterball without being ready to turn off its thrusters when it's when the goose is also connected to that grid because that is a lot of sub grids and things going on there i think what i might do is start building some of those oh we we'll use the tick that'll be a better idea start building some of those uh light posts that i was going to build so we need to load up the tick with a few bits and pieces I can't remember which controls to do, so let's hit number one. Yeah! I think the Tick is definitely the best vehicle for this, because it's fairly capable of going over rough terrain. If we go nice and slow in the Tick, the Tick will be perfectly safe with this, since I can always bail myself out with the thrusters. And since I have been seeing some drones get a little bit closer, it is nice to know that the Tick is armed. Where's that tree? I want to place the first two of these either side of that tree that marks the little gully that we drive down in. There we go. Ah, oh, I did the thing that the thing. Oh, I did it the wrong way. Oh well, that one's stuck that way. I did want them to be vertical, not horizontal, but actually maybe it works better horizontal because then it's then the thing is actually more attached to it. Now my lights turn off. Can I get... I want to get access to these things. Let me get access to it. No! Hmm. I may need to temporarily put a control device on this. The trouble is, I don't have a surface for one of the little control panels. 
So I may just use a timer block. And if we have a look at our transformer box, it will be fully depleted in four days. Eh. If they run out, I'll be surprised. But I think that as a beacon is going to be pretty effective. Plus, I think it looks reasonably nice. Now, if you're going to try and use something like these lights in your own session, you're going to want to, and let's just park for a second, go into the trash cleanup. Oops, cleanup, not admin tools. And make sure that powered isn't checked, because these are currently powered so they won't get cleaned up. It is possible that if your settings are different to this, this is a grid with only four blocks in it. So it's actually a very small grid and the game may actually delete these if you get out of the range that is set in the further th from player than part of this menu. Hmm. It's all looking very easy. Aha. This is it. Gotta find the pass on this bit. I think it's this section just here. Yeah. Yeah, that's the smooth bit. Cool, that was the other pass I needed to find. So let's turn around and let's highlight it with our spotlight. So I want lights either side of this. This is the other one that I often have trouble finding. I mean, this is the main one I have trouble finding. The bit closer to the top, I've actually gotten, I feel, relatively good at spotting. So we're going to need one near the top on each side and one near the bottom on each side to get this working properly. Okay, that's that reasonably well marked. Let's see from the sky. Oops. And from down here... Yeah, I can pretty easily tell that I need to go between those and I'll be safe. Let's just go pop a couple of little markers down by the mine. Just to have markers there, more than anything. Oh no! I just realised... <laughs> so silly! Why have I used a large battery on Rudolph? I could totally get away with a transformer box. I think. It'd be interesting to check if a transformer box has enough power to get me there and to the point of destroying it. Could definitely make a smaller design with one of those attached. It's cheaper too. I mean, it only saves 12 power cells, which isn't huge, but it's something. Certainly makes the mine a bit more obvious. <laughs> makes it look a bit more like a giant gaping moor though. Because the light just disappears. But I kind of like this. I like it. Time to head home. Let's see if I actually can pick up the markers as we go. Oh geez, you can see them from miles away, that's awesome. That's really helpful. So I know I've just got to go around this little bit. This bit's not so not so tough to find which way I've got to go. This bit always was. Nice easy run through the middle. And then we can see those in the distance. We just got to head towards them. Yeah. So much nicer than GPS markers too. I have a lot of antennas on in the base. That should not be the case. Cool. Very, very cool. And... Oh! The sun is about to rise! Ha! Oh, perfect timing! Oh. Should probably control the missile from... Some sort of vehicle with an antenna. Otherwise I'm going to lose control of it. Because I don't have an antenna in the silo yet, which is something I will need to fix. Okay, thrusters and dampeners are on. If we fly up to the plateau, I should be able to get the tick close enough to the silo to act as a relay. So that my antenna range from inside the silo can get all the way to where the enemy base is. I do have range, good. Or at least I assume I have range. 
Now we just wait until dawn. Looking at this missile, it is definitely excessive. I spent a lot more resources on it than needed to be spent. But saying that, if it does manage to effectively destroy the antenna on the enemy base, I can then build something else to assault the base, either using the chicken hawk, see how well it does, or something similar to that. And I should then be able to... Ooh, I wonder if I could build a chick... I could just modify a chicken hawk to have a merge block on it and I'd be able to build them here. Sweet. I might use a chicken hawk. I would have to manually load it. But I might use a chicken hawk or a couple of chicken hawks to try and take out the turrets that are there. And then we need a salvage trailer for the goose. That's what I'm kind of hoping will be the sequence of events. Though I'm strongly suspicious that the sequence of events will be this is a catastrophic failure and I need to make another one. Okay, I think we've got enough light on the launch site and I've put in a few little bits and pieces around here. Some red lights down in the launch rail, some just slightly bluish lights around here. And you can see the advantage of having being able to place these railings on the cube next to it is that I've been able to place these floor lights. And I think the floor lighting just for a base like this, it makes it feel a bit more sinister, which I like. Now, it is time. We need to grab a camera. Oh, yes. That is amazing. That is amazing. Reggie is recording. Thrusters on. Merge block off. And three. Two, one, launch. Oh yeah. Let's get some HUD back up. All right, where are we heading towards? Where are we? Base is there. Did I just go the wrong way? I totally went the wrong way. Oh dear, oh dear. Not having any reverse thrusters does make this a bit interesting. Let's arm our warhead. Let's get some altitude. We can see our marker. It's just ahead of us. Mining operation site, 8.3 kilometers out. Gaining altitude. Do the other cameras work? Yep, six, seven. Ooh, this is a cool view. Let's stick with this one. Oh, actually, we should probably go with the front view. <laughs> Some of you might notice that I have a completely clear camera overlay. I added that mod a little while ago so that we could futz with some Reggie camera perspectives if I wanted to use him on some of the cameras and have a completely clear view of things. I also have the camera panning mod installed too. So we can look around with the camera, which is kind of nice. I think I've already put those mods in the workshop list of mods that you need for this scenario, I hope. If I haven't, I will do it before the next time. But yeah, it's quite cool being able to do that. Nine minutes of power. 2.7. Oh, I think we've just spawned some enemies from something else. Oh no, that's back at base. Okay, we are directly above it. Let's try and stop. See if we can get a hover going. Oh, I think we might be losing altitude too fast. We're just gonna have to go for it. And launch decoys. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, 
did I take it out? Oh, I didn't. I just missed. Ah. Rats, let's do it again. Okay, we need to reverse U. Then we should be able to print this in one go. Ah, oh, that was so close. I think I just took out part of the roof. I think I need to come in at a flatter angle. I have no idea what happened with the decoys or if they even did anything. I don't even know if they disconnected. Oh man, <laughs> I was going to end this episode after just one launch, but oh, that was just too close. I want to do it again. I don't want to wait until <laughs> next week to do it. Oh. And launching in three, two, one, launch. Oh, that did not seem straight. Okay. Let's gain some altitude. And this time we're going to come in a little bit flatter. I think the vertical thing makes, unfortunately, the antenna a very small target. Whereas if I come in horizontal, the antenna is a larger target. Oh, I've got an idea. Which side were the missiles coming from? I think, I think they were coming from the right. If I attack from the left... I should just face the Gatling turret. Which might give me a greater chance of hitting because just a single missile will do me in. Oh no, we need to, uh, before I get too excited, need to arm you guys. I have such a bad habit of using Alt to move my view around when I'm normally flying that I keep doing it with this <laughs> camera perspective and it's very easy to lose my point of my perspective on things. That's one, three, and four I need to turn off as we're coming in. I want a little bit of altitude, but not too much. All right, I think we're almost at the angle I want to come in at. Let's maybe see if we can come in a little bit slow. Actually, that's a really bad idea. Could just leave the decoys attached and see if they work. But I kind of like the idea of launching chaff. Okay, down we go. Final approach. And one, three, four. Yeah, it's launched. They'll be dropping. Okay, antenna. You're mine. Oh! Yes! Direct hit! Direct hit! Woohoo! <laughs> oh, finally. Splitsy builds something that's successful. Ah. Oh. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Haha, <laughs> so excited. Well, I think we have a plan for next time. We need some chicken hawks. And we need a bunch of them so we can take out that turret and the, the Gatling turret and the missile turret. Then, I just need a salvage trailer for the goose. Oh yes. We are going to attack the enemy base. It's going to be happening. Probably is going to be happening in like, you know four episodes or so because there's a few things I need to build but no more attacks from that direction that means we've now opened up extra space to safely build a new solar tower expand things I don't need to worry about being attacked so much right now and when I get tired of feeling safe I will start putting in Meridius 9's mods and then I will be terrified all of the time well, on that note, there is a whole bunch of military stuff to come. So I'll see you then.